Hey guys, how you doing? It's been quite a bit since my Attack of the Clones review and the reason for that is because I was simply just not rushing to see Revenge of the Sith because I really didn't like the first two films at all so I was like, okay, Revenge of the Sith just going to be more crap on top of more crap, etc, etc but today I finally sat down and watched Revenge of the Sith because I wanted to do a video for you guys again so I was like, oh, Revenge of the Sith I haven't watched it yet, let's watch it, so now here we are. I'm going to start out by saying this, Revenge of the Sith I do think is the best of the prequel trilogy and that is not saying too much I know but it, compared to my expectations going into it and what I actually saw on my TV I was like mm, it's, it's actually a lot better than I thought it would be but I still don't think it's a great film per se but not a bad film. First off the good stuff, the action sequences in this film were a lot more entertaining than they were in episode 1 and 2 despite still being like CGI driven and pretty much just tons of CGI thrown on the screen I did find myself more entertained in the action in this film than I was in Attack of the Clones and The Phantom Menace. I don't know why but it, it is what it is, I was just more entertained in Revenge of the Sith. By far my favourite part of Revenge of the Sith was seeing Anakin Skywalker just crumble and fall to the dark side and seeing how that has like kind of a ripple effect on all the things surrounding him. Like seeing the conflicts inside of him and how him going to the dark side affects Padme, Obi-Wan, the Jedi Council etc etc and that's a funny thing to Despite really not liking the first two films, it was still interesting seeing all that stuff set up in the first two films just crumble to dust in this film because of his turn to the dark side and the Sith are wiping out all the Jedi. I like seeing that a lot. Plus it's like a cool kind of message as well saying that even if you have good intentions, depending on what path you take to try and get those good intentions to come to fruition, it can still end up being, well, worse. <laughs> the third act of this film I like because I like seeing all the action sequences, there's lots of cool visual stuff in the third act of this film, everything's all going down and plus I like seeing how it ties to the original Star Wars trilogy, like how it sets up the first Star Wars film, like Luke and Leia getting born, Darth Vader becoming Darth Vader and the construction of the Death Star and all that cool stuff. I like seeing how it just connects to the original trilogy and I think it did a, it did a really good job of it as well. Now getting on to the baddest stuff in this film, first I want to talk about Hayden Christensen. I was dreading seeing him again in this film because I absolutely hated him in Attack of the Clones. He was so horrible in that film and in this film I will say he was better than he was in Attack of the Clones but his performance still for me just wasn't great. He wasn't like a whiny brat, he wasn't complaining all the time like he was in Attack of the Clones but he still has that same tone of voice like, yes master. I'm falling to the dark side or whatever he says but he still has that same tone of voice and his, his performance still feels very uninspired to me so he's not really a great actor in this film he's just a serviceable role. Ewan McGregor was pretty much the exact same as he was in episode 2 like well serviceable again and the rest of the performances were just serviceable and <laughs> I keep saying serviceable a lot because that's what they were they weren't great and they weren't really inspired a lot and it was just serviceable they did what they had to do in the film so I guess that's kind of a praise and kind of a good thing but it's a bit of a mixture of both good and bad it's not inspired but it does the job which is quite confusing but that's what it is or at least what I thought it was. Getting into more of the bad stuff I'll say that quite a percentage of the CGI in this film still looks quite atrocious especially when a character will do a flip over a railing and then start fighting someone. When they do the flip oh my god it looks really cartoony. It looks really bad when they do flips and all that but one scene in particular when Mace Windu and Palpatine are having that little duel and he, Palpatine's like hitting him with a forced lightning and then all of a sudden he starts becoming really decrepit and he's like really shaking like ah. I'm just like it looked horrible. It looked really, really bad when he was just coming decrepit. He just looks like a horrible dummy just going, eh, eh, eh. and it really bad and really creepy as well. Like, Ugh, quite creepy that seeing the horrible face. And but yeah, the CGI in this film, some of it's okay, a bit of an improvement on the other films, but a lot of it is still really bad. Just like in the other two films, a lot of the dialogue does feel again uninspired and not really delivered with a lot of emotion. But some of the scenes with like Anakin and Palpatine were quite interesting actually. So there are some good dialogue scenes in there, like in terms of what they're talking about and it could be quite riveting at times but I'm just saying most of the dialogue is just like yes I will go here yes yes and same old stuff. This one's not a really big negative though it's kind of a small little gripe I have I noticed it like throughout the particularly the second half of the film some of the editing was a bit choppy at times like there would be this action sequence or a fight scene it'd be going on you're like okay I'm getting into it then all of a sudden it will just transition to someone like walking down some stairs or getting off some kind of ship or something I'm just like oh okay and then it will show them walking somewhere, then it will cut back to an edit fight scene or something like that. I'm just like, whoa, okay, so we're back here now. It just takes away from the excitement and the intrigue of the fighting and the action, I thought. By far the best part of the film is the end lightsaber fight between Anakin and Obi-Wan. That 
is pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. They were by far the best part, the most entertaining part of the entire film. So to wrap this up, Revenge of the Sith, I do think was the best of the prequel trilogy. There's still a lot of problems with it in terms of like the dialogue and the CGI and the writing and all that stuff. All that stuff is still there, but this film does have enough sequences and enough cool action and cool fight sequences, especially the lightsaber duel with Anakin and Obi-Wan at the end. It has enough of that stuff and it has good ties to the original trilogy where I can safely say that this is a lot better than the previous two films and the best of the prequel trilogy and it's a mildly entertaining just okay film not great not terrible but for me just okay really in the middle for me i am halfway done i have officially reviewed all the star wars prequel trilogy films if you have not seen my attack of the clones or phantom menace i'll put an annotation somewhere so you can go check those reviews out so what do you think of episode 3 revenge of the sith whatever your thoughts are tell me down there and if you like this stuff and you want to see more of my stuff then be sure to subscribe to my channel because i got stuff coming to you guys all the time